The next poem I'll read in both English and French. It's called In This Light Briefly. I imagine the sun shines once and only once. We stand in this light briefly, gratefully alive, with morning coming in like a guest we do not expect quite yet, flamboyant, full of summer noise, bearing big bouquets of flowers and singing the songs of several birds. I listen to those separate songs of wren and oriole, robin, sparrow, thrush, soon after waking next to you. And in their trills and whistles, in their chirrups and spir spiraling sounds, I heard my own joy rise from the dewy slopes of sleep and gather up into the crest of early light, your love, all its brief opening roses of summer. Brièvement cette lumière, j'imagine le soleil qui ne brûle qu'une fois, qu'une seule fois. Nous nous tenons devant cette lumière brièvement, magnifiquement vivant. Lorsque le jour nous pénètre tel un invité que nous n'attendons pas si tôt, flamboyant, plein de bruit d'été, portant un grand bouquet de fleurs, et des chants d'oiseaux innombrables. J'écoute ces chants à l'éveil avec toi, de droite blai et l'oriot, du rouge-gorge, moineau, chacun unique et tellement beau. Et dans les sons perlés et les sifflements, dans les claquements et les spirales, j'entends s'élever ma joie du doux sommeil humecté. Retenu à la crête d'une lumière matinale, ton amour, toutes les roses éphémères de l'été. Another summer poem for my father, Lionel Pelletier, in both English and French. Excuse the shuffling. <clears throat> Bending for sweet strawberries, you fall in the late morning heat onto your hands and knees. No dew now on the straw. Sun shed that hours ago. This always was your sort of devotions. The hard ground softened only a little by grass or hay, your prayers, not ch talk or chant, but motion, getting going, moving toward what is, created, breathing, red, sweet, of a season, bending in your final week of summer for strawberries. Te penchant pour des fraises douces, à la chaleur de la fin de matin, tu tombes sur les mains et les genoux, pas plus de la rosée sur la paille. Ça fait quelques heures déjà que le soleil a l'ôté. C'était toujours ton genre de dévotion, le sol dur n'amolli qu'un peu, par l'herbe ou par le foin, tes prières pas de propos ni de mélopée, mais de mouvement, se mettre en route, bouger vers ce qui est, crier, respirant, rouge, douce, d'une saison, te penchant à ta dernière semaine d'été pour des fraises. The next um, is titled Truth Telling. A crow caws 
three times waking me outside my cabin window, the spruces, boreal goddesses in their morning gowns of lichen and mist, listen and wait. The little firs whisper and congregate beneath, and the rocks all around open their mossy eyes, gleaming green with their mysteries. Down at the water, gulls float and drift, aimless. On a rock, two cormorants keep company after feeding on shining fish. One expands its wings to dry as the fog gives itself to October sun. It stands on a single thin leg, so still, balancing sea, sky, heartbeat becoming a brief magnetic pole for the whole world's indecipherable orbit. Ready to fly again, its black feathers blaze now with gold. Later, I wondered how the lowly cormorant in the evolution of water birds missed being given waterproof feathers. How we have used the misfit bird for ages to fish for us a rope tied around the neck to prevent it from swallowing the catch. How cormorant is called gluttonous in Webster's. I know what I saw, the truth telling of this morning, the miracle of deficit that shimmers towards grace, miracle reminding me to keep seeking. Later again, in a mown pasture of clover, Hay, blueberry, aster, walking toward the outlook at Connery Cove. I stopped for no reason on the path, looked down to the yellow grass, a praying mantis there, so still, brilliant, I bowed to see it. I tell you now, that mantis turned its head, looked up, and its jeweled eyes met mine. 